I know there are a lot of people out there that are actually wanting to make a brand new character for the DLC, but they're just not bothered to go through all the effort of getting the best weapons, spells, talismans. So basically that's what this video is going to be for. I recommend everyone just making a second or a third character just to go through the DLC, whether it be just to have a different type of build or just to play the DLC a second time after you're done beating it the first time. But as for this character, in just a little over three hours, I have some of the best weapons in the entire game with the ability to get one of them at max level. So you can get a max level Blasphemous Blade, Death's Poker, Mogwin Sacred Spear, Bloodhound Fang, Bolter Grantsax. I have all these weapons. Also have 13 flasks at plus 10, which is not max, but it's close to it. We have four talisman pouches with some of the best talismans in the game, the Scorpion Charms, the Ritual Talismans, Carrion Filigate Crest, the Phlox, and the Graven Talismans. Also have all the best Crystal Tears that you need, some of the best Ashes of War with all the Wet Blades so you can unlock any single type of infusion. Also did pick up some Lava Tears so we can respec, and just picked up some of the best spells. For Sorceries, we have Carrion Slicer, Knight's Comet, Terra Magica. Also do have the Meteorite Staff and the Carrion Regal Scepter. And as for Incantations, we have Catch Flame, the Black Flame spells, some of the best Dragon spells. And we do have the Erdtree Seal, God Slayer Seal, and the Golden Order Seal. And on top of all that, we do have Radan and Moog killed, which is going to be the requirements to access the DLC. You do need to have these two bosses killed. And we're also at level 100, which I probably do recommend to be at around about level 120 or 125 at the least. But thankfully, I actually do have the best rune farming method unlocked. So if you just end up spending an extra hour just doing a bunch of rune farming, you can easily get to level 125. And this is also possible without much skill involved at all and no glitches. Now this is going to be set up like a little bit of a walkthrough. This is going to be like a very condensed version of that walkthrough. So I'm going to be doing a bunch of cuts and skips. So I'm also going to be assuming that you've already played and beaten the game. This is going to be recommended for people that are doing their second type of playthrough. But if you still wanted to see a whole like uncut version with no skips or cuts at all, I'm going to link that down below. It is going to be like a three and a half hour playthrough. But if you did want to see an uncut version, it does exist. Anyway, this is going to be a longer one and I'm going to be yapping a whole bunch. So let's just get right into it. Okay, so to start off with, I'm going to be going with the wretch class. It just makes it simple for everybody if you're going to go with a different build. So if I just start off with the basic class, it'd be very simple. Definitely go with the golden seed starting class. I'm going to go spec into a faith intelligence build as I'll explain later on. Um, but going to do a lot of skipping early on because everyone knows where to go early on. Go straight to the treasure Ella, pick up that golden rune, sell it to Kale, and then go buy the crafting kit and just go pick up that smithing stone. But yeah, just run straight to the gate, gate front. It's just a straight line. You can't really mess it up. Um, at this point, we're not going to be doing as much skipping. It's just like that first section, like everyone knows how to run to the gate front. It's not that hard. Um, but yeah, pick up the flail because we're going to be needing that to go kill an NPC later on. It's not that necessary. You can kill Grail with the flail as well. Um, if you do pick up the dexterity tier or if you have the dexterity requirements, that is. Um, pick up that whetstone so we can infuse our weapons. Going to go hit up this graze. I'm actually going to change it to daytime because we're actually going to cross the bridge where the boss is. And the boss only spawns in at nighttime and it'll just be very annoying. It is a slight convenience, that's all it is. Um, go hit up the bushes here because Bok will spawn and he's going to give us 10 mushrooms. We're going to need these mushrooms to craft some pots. We're going to be using holy pots and sleep pots. Holy pots for the death poker if you did want to get that. And the sleep pots because we're going to fight the godskin, a couple of godskins actually, to get some certain types of items depending on your build. But you just hug the right side of that bridge, go pick up the somber one and the smithing one. And we're going to go up here to pick up the gold pickled foul foot because we're going to need a bunch of gold pickled foul feet so you can actually just get a bunch more runes. You just use them just before you kill a boss fight or just after you kill a boss fight and mean that the runes are a bit delayed. You just get like 30% more runes when you just kill a boss, which is obviously really nice. And that does stack with the gold scarab talisman. But yeah, continue hitting or heading south to the lake south or well, the lake Augur Hill south grace. And we're going to go to the left here east. This is obviously going to be some sped up gameplay. If you're going to like lose track as to what's going on, once again, I have the uncut version. You can go check that out in the description. Uh, we did just pass a chest. In that chest is going to be the Great Epe, which is probably the best heavy thrusting sword to use that can be infused. So that one is actually a pretty decent option to have. Um, that scroll that we did pick up is going to net us carry and slicer. So you do want to definitely pick that up because it's probably like the best, if one of the best sorceries in the entire game. And also do pick up that Starlight Shard because we're going to need that for the Saluvis' quest to get the Magic Scorpion charm. But you just continue left alongside this bridge, get the smithing stones and get that stone sword key. Oh my god, we're going to be doing so much yapping and talking for like an hour and a half straight. Oh god. Um, anyway, we're at the Weeping Peninsula. We're going to have to hug rights the entire time because we're going to pick up some Golden Seeds, Sacred Tears, and we're going to pick up the Faith Tier as well. I just like to come here every single time that I start a new playthrough because there's a bunch of Sacred Tears and some Golden Seeds over here that are very nice to grab. But yeah, just basically hug the right side to get this Faith Tier. You know, I'm just like not going to talk as much. It's pretty self-explanatory. I'm just going to save my breath because if I just talk for a whole hour and a half straight, I'm not going to survive. 
So I'm just gonna chill. But definitely pick up that Blade Grease though, because that Blade Grease is gonna come in handy for killing a Grail, because Grail has a large amount of health and Bleed is probably one of the best ways to kill that boss. I think the Death Poker is going to do it better, but obviously the Death Poker is not going to be that easy to access and Bleed is way more accessible. Um, we're gonna pick up a bunch of Trina Lilies because that's going to help us craft Sleep Pots, because we are going to kill the Godskin Noble and Apostle later on in the playthrough, and it'll just make that process easier. They're not that challenging of a boss, especially by the time that we are going to fight them, we are going to be like pretty overleveled. At least have like a decent weapon with like the decent level to that. So, but it is going to make the boss fight easier. Um, anyway, teleport back to the main bonfire or the main grace at the Weeping Peninsula. Just go head down, pick up that Morning Star if you wanted to, and pick up the Smithing Stone too. Uh, the Morning Star is a very decent hammer, probably one of the best hammers that can be infused. Gets a good moveset, it gets base bleed. You honestly can use that to kill Grail with the bleed grease. So you honestly can go there right now. Uh, we're actually going to use a different weapon to go kill Grail. Um, we're going to go up there to go pick up the um, the green turtle shield. That's just going to give us some more stamina regen along the way. Um, go to that guy, that merchant, and purchase the smithing too. Um, you actually can go get a bit more souls just by killing some random enemies and actually picking up that cracked pot also. Because the cracked pot that he does sell is, is going to come in handy. Although we're not going to pick that one up off of him. We're only going to get like four or five in the playthrough, which is more than enough. But if you ever feel the need to get some more cracked pots, you can go pick it up off those merchants. But yeah, now at this point, pick up that golden seed, take her right, go all the way up here to go pick up another sacred tier. You basically can't really miss it. You just like hug right the entire time. It is a pretty narrow passageway. And then pick up the sacred tier, and then we can teleport all the way back to the gate front. Gotta do so much yapping. I need to chill. Anyway, just head straight up from the gate front. Pick up the golden seed and we'll take our rights to get some more smithing stones. Uh, we'll basically get the perfect amount of smithing ones and smithing twos to just upgrade our weapon. Our weapon of choice is going to be the iron balls because those weapons are just insane. They just like make quick work of basically everything. They're not the easiest things to use because they do have pretty poor range, but they're still amazing weapons to have. Uh, but yeah, at that point, we're just going to go continue along here, pick up this strength tier. We're going to pick up all the um, damaging based tiers, all the elemental based tiers and all the stat boosting based tiers. They're obviously just really important to have. So we're gonna pick up all of those in this playthrough. I'm gonna drop down here. We're gonna go light up this grace. And I think I just, yeah, let's pop all my crystal tiers or my sacred tiers and my um, golden seeds. I do put determination. We actually did pick up determination. I forgot to mention that, but that scarab at the bridge. Um, determination is gonna boost our next attack by 60%, which is going to be good to have early on as an alternative until we get Cragblade. Um, but we're just going to go kill this guy because he's going to give us the Golden Vow Ash of War, which that should just be used on almost every single type of build. Unless you have a Faith build, then use the Golden Vow spell, which we're going to be using later on in the playthrough. So this is going to be very nice to have early on. You can just put this on any type of weapon. We're just going to buy a dagger later on to just throw it onto that because it's very light. Uh, the Lance that we just picked up is one of the best strength weapons in the game. It's really good to use. Unfortunately for this playthrough, it is going to be centered around just building around a somber based weapon because you, can't, you don't really get enough smithing stones early on to get a maxed out weapon. You can do it, but it's going to require a lot of effort and we're just not going to be doing that this playthrough. So we're just going to center around going into a somber based weapon. So all of our smithing stones it is going to be used to have a weapon to just kill the bosses until we get to that spot. But yeah, we just killed um, Alexander there. You don't have to kill him at that point. You can kill him later on. Um, you actually can complete his quest line if you wanted to, but that's all the way at Farum Azla. And if you just wanted to just have a quick playthrough just to get to the DLC as soon as possible, you can just kill him at that location. Um, we, we are going to kill Redan, and Redan, you can obviously summon him for that boss fight. So if you're not confident in fighting Redan, you can just leave him alive and you can just kill Alexander later on. Um, but yes, just past Alexander, we actually hit up the merchant and we bought some more smithing stones of him, the smithing twos specifically. And definitely pick up those Trina Lilies along the way because Trina Lilies... Well, Trina Lilies are very hard to come by because they're finite, so you can't really farm them very consistently, and they're going to be help us get some more sleep pots. Uh, but you hit up the Grays, come down to this location so we can pick up some golden runes, because we're going to be selling a bunch of these things along the way. Because um, we're not going to really be killing many enemies, so we're going to be using a bunch of these to go level up our weapons and whatnot. Uh, that cookbook is going to help us unlock sleep pots, which that's obviously going to be nice to have, but it's not going to be really used early on, but obviously pick it up anyway. And now we're going to be heading to this church to pick up our Wondrous Flask and another Sacred Tier. Now at this point you honestly can go equip the Strength Tier. 
Um, actually, no, I wouldn't bother doing it because we're actually going to get the spiked crack tier up ahead and we're going to be using both of those things because charged heavy attack builds early on are just very consistent. They just do a lot of damage and a lot of things have very good charged heavy attacks, but yeah, the Iron Balls is just going to be the best at doing it. But yeah, just head to the Mistwood Ruins, pick up that map. And also pick up all of these tarnished golden sunflowers alongside the spiked crack tier because those sunflowers is going to be what's needed to go craft holy pots to help kill the death bird or the death right bird to get the death poker. Uh, but that actually is going to be a smithing tool in that little chest and you can just go sneakily wake out or work our way through this little section. Normally you can ride your horse there. I don't know why it didn't work that time. Um, but yeah, here's going to be the axe talisman which is going to stack with the spiked cracks to, to just further enhance our charge attack damage. I think they end up being about 25% or 30% more damage to your charge heavy attacks. Uh, but continue heading east past that section. There's going to be another merchant where we can buy, I think, another smithing two. No, there's no smithing twos, but you probably want to buy enough for at least 12 smithing ones because you need 12 of each single one. I did buy a festering bloody finger because we're going to need that for Vari's quest line. Vari does actually give you five, but you have to go like run towards him to pick up the five. And there's a lot of backtracking. So since we're here, you might as well just pick up at least one or two festering bloody fingers. We can buy some more early, um, later on anyway um, via patches. Uh, but yeah, at this point, we're going to go through this little high, uh, fort height so we can actually go pick up the medallion so we can go access Altus Plateau pretty quickly. That cookbook is going to help us unlock bleed grease, which is crafting more bleed grease is going to help us um, kill Grail. Well, I'm actually not going to kill Grail early on, but if you wanted to kill Grail early on, if you just wanted a bunch more souls because you just felt like you're just taking too much hits and then you just weren't surviving. You could just do that and the more bleed grease you have, the means the more you can actually farm Grail because you can actually use a glitch to infinitely respawn them. Um, we're not going to be doing that though. But yeah, at this point, let's go teleport back to the third church of Marika. And then behind the church, there's going to be a teleporter that takes you straight to the Dragon Borrow. I'm sure everybody knows about this. This is the best way to get overpowered early or to just get at a higher level very early on. Uh, we're not going to be killing Grail, we're just going to go kill the Dragon Rider, or the Dragon Rider, the um, the Knight's Cavalry. Why did I say Dragon Rider? Damn. Anyway. Light up that grace and let's go continue heading along the path that you see on screen. Now once you light up this grace or rest anywhere in this location, Melon is going to spawn in and tell you to go to the round table hold. I just skipped that part out, but yeah, definitely change it to nighttime so the night cavalry guy can actually spawn in. Uh, now the way to kill this boss is just run all the way to the end. This is the way I like to do it. There's plenty of ways to do it. I just find this way the easiest, quickest, and most consistent. Just hug until he actually goes in that little lip, that right side. If he's not there and he actually is on the platform which you're standing on, just go back out again and run back in. Um, but yeah, basically... As soon as he actually jumps off the ledge, then you just go pop a gold pickled foul foot, and then you end up getting about 50 something thousand, 55,000 runes. But let's run back to the beginning again where you actually had the grace, and jumping up here will actually net you the memory stone. Um, we're going to need a bunch of memory stones if you want to use spells. We can get plenty in this playthrough. Now, to the right of the memory stone, there actually was a way to get some more soul farming methods via the ball. There's like a big giant ball that spawns in. You can just make it fall off the ledge, and you can get like 2,000 runes every single time that you do it. Um, we're, we're gonna have plenty of runes. Like, if you just kill the, uh, the Knight's Cavalry on the bridge, 55,000 is more than enough to actually just get you enough, um, health. Which I think I'm just gonna be spec all into health, because early on, you don't really benefit as much going into your damaging stats, because all your damage early on is going to come from just boosting your weapon level. So just leveling up your weapon, or just getting certain types of talismans, and, um, crystal tears, those things will actually help you just boost your damage. More so than actually like leveling up your strength, dexterity, faith, and intelligence. So yeah, for me, I just went all into Vigor. I think I had like 15 Mind and 15 Endurance and just dumped the rest into Vigor. Now at this point, we're actually going to go run and actually grab the Sombra 8 and the Sombra 9. Obviously, we're not going to be using them right now. But since we're here, we might as well go grab it because on the, on the way, we're actually going to go hit up the Merchant to go pick up the Spiked Kestis, which that's going to be the best way to actually go kill a grail in my opinion this early on at least without like any buffs and low requirements um but yeah that crystal is not crystal is that um teardrop scarab is actually going to have a decent amount of health because the dragon bar is considered a late game area despite it being accessed very early on so if you have like a large weapon i recommend just ledge killing it just bait it towards the cliff hit it with some charged heavy attacks and it'll just fall off and there's going to be a somber nine that i just picked up 
at the bottom of the cliff. Anyways, continue heading along this way, pick up the map, and at the very end, there is going to be a merchant of which we can buy the spiked Kestis. And that weapon is actually very good. You honestly can use that instead of the iron balls. The charged heavy attacks are not going to be as fast, but like they're still very powerful and they can actually output a lot of damage. You can also go pick up the beast torch repellent or the beast repellent torch. Um, it does help in certain types of areas because this enemies won't like really be as aggressive. They'll just be shied away. Um, only for certain types of beasts. Um, anyway, go straight back to the first step, Grace, because there's going to be another gold pickled Falfoot here. And then just end up teleporting back to Fort Faroth. Uh, we're going to need that. You can need, you're going to need that gold pickled Falfoot if you want to kill Grail because we used our first one or the only one that actually had against the Knight's Cavalry, which does give you about 55,000. And if you go kill Grail, which only takes like a few minutes, you can get, I think it's like 90,000 with the gold pickled Falfoot. I forget the exact number, but somewhere around like 80 to 90,000. Um, there actually is a way to farm Grail, which I'll explain later on. There's going to be timestamps in the video. So you can just go skip ahead if you actually wanted to go see how I killed Grail and how to farm them. It's not that hard. All you're going to do is like sit at the tail, just hit her a whole bunch, wait till she dies, and just go run straight back to the Grace. Rest, and she'll respawn. But the thing is, when you do it that way, she actually won't give you enough souls or as much souls if you just let her die because normally when you kill her, all the dragons around her die. But when you farm her, the dragons around her don't actually die. And it depends on the timing, but in most cases, they don't die. You don't really get as much runes. So there's actually much faster rune farming methods out there that I'll actually explain later on. Um, but yeah, with the blade grease that we actually end up getting and the spiked casters, you can go ahead and hit her leg now and you just get a whole bunch of runes that way. But yeah, I just ran straight down to Millicent um, where the Church of Plague was. Definitely pick up the Starlight Shard along the way because that's very handy um, in terms of getting the Magic Scorpion Charm. But yeah, now it has teleported back to the Storm Hill Shack and now we're going to head to Leonia of the Lakes. I just skipped out that part because it's literally just a straight narrow path. You literally cannot get it wrong. There's no left or right. You just go straight. And then same thing there. I just like skipped that part out because it's just you're just running straight. You're not really doing anything else. You just continue running straight. Talk to this merchant. We're going to pick up the smithing twos that he has. And if you need to buy any more smithing ones to get at least 12, just do that as well. You're going to sell some of the golden runes that you picked up along the way. And I definitely recommend picking up the lantern as well. Um, lantern is very handy to have in certain types of dungeons. I actually didn't pick it up because, you know, I'm very comfortable in going through these dungeons anyway because, you know, I've played this game a lot of times. But um, I should have picked it up anyway so you guys can actually see where I'm going in certain dungeons. But I, I kind of didn't, so yeah, that was a mistake. Um, but yeah, coming down here is going to net us the Two Finger Alien, which gives us plus five to faith. That's going to help us meet the minimum requirements of Flame Grimmer Strength because you're going to need 10 faith for that with the Two Finger Alien, so... That's just going to be handy. Now at this point, I didn't need to light up that grace, but I just want to show you guys that if you continue going north from that section, all the way north is actually going to be where you can get the Lightning Prayer Book. I forget the exact name, but it actually does net you Lightning Spear, which is going to be one of the better projectiles to have. But yeah, going through that teleporter is actually going to lead you to Rayo Lucario. And now we're just going to go run, run and head down this way so we can get some more Smithing Stones. So there's going to be those smithing twos right there. There's going to be a map up ahead, and there's a golden seed right here as well. At this point, I'm just like marking on the map like exactly where it is. It makes it easy for you guys, because this place is kind of very annoying to navigate. Uh, but there is actually a bunch of smithing twos around this section. I think we only need like three more to get to 12. But I think you might see me like lighting it up on the map to tell you exactly where to get another smithing two. Because they tend to be at the gazebos, so any like gazebo they actually go to, I think I light up here, yeah. At that gazebo, you can get some more smithing twos. We don't need to go there. We're just going to go straight to the Boil Prawn Shack, which is right ahead of us, because that is going to be where we get the Iron Balls, because you can go kill this guy. Now, the thing is, when killing Bogarts, we don't actually need to kill him at this point. And honestly, I pretty recommend killing him later on and actually doing a part of his quest line first, which is not that hard. Um, because he actually does sell some Boiled Prawns and some Boiled Crabs, which that's actually like damage negation boosted buffs. Now that actually is a body buff, so it's not going to stack with things like flame going strength. Um, but yeah, the way to kill him is just to just track him in the corner, go use spinning chain off the flail. If you don't have the requirements for the flail, just pick up the dexterity tier, of which was literally just directly right of this section that I already picked up. You can encrypt the dexterity tier, gives you plus 10 to dexterity. You can actually use that on the flail and then he'll just end up dying in like one cycle of just stamina bar. 
but you're heading down south, we can actually go to Rhea. Exhaust her dialogue, she'll give you the um, Volcano Manor invitation thingy. And then you can go teleport back to Rhea Lucario. And now we're going to go to the right side and go pick up another Smithing 2. These are going to be three more Smithing 2s. I think that's going to be enough to get us to 12. So now we don't really need any more. We're still going to pick up the Bell Bearing anyway, because it's going to help you guys out if you did want to go use a different type of weapon. So don't worry about that if you're just not going to be, if you don't feel like you have enough. Um, but continuing heading along to the right, we're going to go pick up the Academy Key to access the Rayu Lucario Academy. And we're going to continue going on this way because we're going to go get Terra Magica. This is the dungeon to do it. If you don't really have an intelligence build or don't have any intention of going with an intelligence build, I wouldn't recommend doing that at all. But yeah, if you did, definitely go to that dungeon and just light up the grace and just run out. We're not going to actually clear out that dungeon until later on. Honestly, you can do it right now because those enemies are weaker to striking damage. I probably should have, but we do it later in the playthrough, so it's perfectly fine. But now we're going to go teleport back to the main academy gate or like the south academy gate. And instead of going to the right, we're actually going to go to the left that time and go head all the way to EG, go through the teleporter. You can go head up the grace directly behind you as soon as you spawn in. But just go continue heading all the way north because that's where EG is going to be. And I think we're going to level up our weapon at this point. That's probably the reason why I didn't go kill them because my weapon is not even leveled. That is true. But yeah, if you don't have the runes to like level up, you picked up a bunch of golden runes along the way. So you can just consume one of those. But yeah, get it to plus six. And since we're here, we can go pick up the intelligence tier because it is very close by. You just drop down, run all the way ahead. And that should be the last of the stat boosting tiers. There's no arcane tier, unfortunately. Hopefully there's one of the DLC. But that should be dexterity, strength, faith, and intelligence. But yeah, now we're going to go actually to the academy itself. Go inside, there's actually a golden seed all the way at the bottom. And as soon as you pick it up, just teleport back to the grace that you were at. And we're going to go head into the academy. Obviously I skipped the part of just going up a very long elevator. And just, just going through a very straight and narrow path. It's very obvious. Um, but you didn't really need to pick up that somber stone. Because there's going to be plenty of somber threes that you can grab. But that's just one of them, so... Might as well. And obviously I've just ran past some graces because, you know, I'm not bothered to pick them up. But the main reason actually why we're here is because I want to get an armor set. Because I'm naked right now, as you can see. So yeah, I grabbed that carry and knight set. It's pretty good early on. You can't really go wrong. Nice damage negation. Good magic damage negation too. There actually is another Sumber 3 just directly ahead of me. In that dead end path. So if you want another Sumber 3, you can go pick that one up. But yeah, the only reason I came here is for that. So we're going to come back here later on anyway. If you actually obviously wanted to kill Renala. There's some more magic based stuff, and if was, obviously killing Vanilla unlocks just being able to respec. Anyway, now we're going to go head back to the main academy gates, go through the other side of that gate to head to the northern part of Leonia. And now we're going to go directly right to go head to a dungeon. But you're yeah, going down these things will lead us to the Rayo Lucaria Crystal Tunnel, which this one is actually going to give us the bell bearing for the smithing one and two. I kind of cut it a little bit there because my, I just ran too far for some reason because I'm stupid. Um, but yeah, as soon as you like, to the part where I cut it out, just run directly to the left. All you gotta do is hug the wall, you'll find it. So you don't, technically you don't really need to go through this dungeon because you already have all the smithing ones and twos, but there is gonna be some smithing threes here. There are some somber stones that you can pick up it is a somber twos and threes, so you don't really need them because EG does sell them. So going through this dungeon isn't that necessary, but just for the sake of just unlocking a bell bearing and just having the ability to buy infinite smithing ones and twos, it's obviously going to be nice if you actually wanted to go build around weapons that you might find later on or even in the DLC. But yeah, just keep following the path. It is a pretty straight and narrow path all the way to the boss. It is a pretty large dungeon though. I'm going through this area like earlier on with like lower amounts of like health is definitely not going to be ideal because these enemies can hit pretty hard. So that's why we actually spec into a lot of vigor early on because this is very beneficial. The damaging stats don't matter that much. But as you can see, those like projectiles just like fucked me up really bad. If we're at a lower level, we would have been dead. But yeah, we survived. Now directly behind where I just dropped down, there's actually going to be some more smithing threes. We don't really need them. I think we just have like the perfect amount to go get to plus what is it, 7 at this point? It doesn't really matter because we are going to pick up the bell bearing later on in the game at the Altus Plateau. And that one is actually going to go net us um, the smithing 3s and 4s, so we'll be able to purchase them infinitely. But yeah, these Crystallians are just very weak to striking damage. You just hit them with your charged heavy attacks, throw on determination, and it should be an easy clap. 
And now we're going to go back to the round table and just buy some stuff. I just bought a dagger and a finger seal. The dagger is so I can put on Golden Vow because I think I put it on the club to fight that boss. So now I just put it back on a dagger because it's lighter to have. And I picked up the finger seal as well. So we're going to go equip Flame Grammy Strength later on. Which you're going to benefit of using Flame Grammy Strength for any single type of build. All you need is at least 10 Faith and the two finger heirloom. Um, but we teleported back to the North Sake or North Lake. I'll kill Lake. I forget what it's called, but the north part of the um, Grace in Leonia. But yeah, you just run through the lake itself. I cut that part out because it's just like a straight narrow path along the river. You go kill that NPC. If you end up struggling against that NPC, that NPC that we're talking to right now, he's actually going to help you out in that fight. And yeah, we have a pretty decently leveled weapon. You have a lot of health. You should beat it pretty easily. It does give you the Reduvia, which is a nice early game weapon to have. Although I don't really recommend using it for an arcane build because we are going to get Mogwin Sacred Spear, which is amazing to have. So there's not really much of a need. But that NPC that we did talk to, you can kill him to go get the Nagakiba, which is probably the best katana in the game. It's really, really good to have. And also doing his quest line is going to help you trigger the Eleonora invasion, which that does net you Eleonora's pole blade, but more importantly, probably does give you the purifying crystal tier, which does help ca um, cancel out the knee heal attack that Moog gets. So if you are struggling against Moog, I recommend doing his questline to get the Purifying Crystal tier. Although I am going to show you easy ways to go kill him. And with the build that we have, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. But we did actually kill Patches. And the reason why we killed Patches is because he actually does give us... Um, what does he give us? Gold Pickled Falfi. That's what we need, yeah. Um, you can just like leave him alive and he can be a merchant, but killing him is just way quicker. And you can get his armor set too, which I did put on right now because... It's very fashionable. But yeah, the three pickled foul feet that he has is very handy. He also does give you the Moog Shackle, I mean the Margot Shackle, which that's going to be nice to kill Margot and Morgoth. Although with the build that we're going to be having, it's not going to be a big deal. We don't need that at all. But it is still nice to have though. But yeah, at this point, we're just going to go to the northern parts of Leonia and then run all the way to the Altus Plateau. And at the Altus Plateau, there's going to be a lot of stuff there for us. Um, but yeah, first things first is probably going to be grabbing the Ritual Sword Talisman which is going to be off Gilika. And our weapon is probably going to be more than enough to kill her. She doesn't have much health anyway. She's not that challenging of a boss fight. But this is really going to be like the first boss that you kind of want to fight, I guess. Because you didn't really need to kill the Crystalian. Um, if you decided to leave Bogart alive, you probably wouldn't kill this person right now. You'd probably kill him a bit later on until you actually get the Iron Balls, which I'll explain how to go kill Bogart later. Or later in the game. If you did want to get the Boiled Prawns and the Boiled Crabs. Um... But yeah, Gilika is very weak to damage, so you just go spam your charged heavy attacks, and you should win. And there's your Ritual Sword Talisman, which is 10% more damage at full HP, which we're going to be using this talisman basically as soon as I get my next talisman pouch, which will be after Margaret, which is not too close ahead, I guess. But yeah, at this point, we're going to go head straight north till we go to the next grace. There's going to be a few different paths of which we can take. Um, I'll explain all of them in a little bit. But yeah, this grace right here, we're going to be coming back to this grace a few times. Um, now, to start off with, we're going to go to, like, I don't know how to call this section, Northeast. How about that? Yeah, there's a compass right there. I forget there's a compass in this game. Anyway, but we're going to get the Amber Starlights, which is going to help us do Silivus's quest line. So if you actually wanted to go get the Magic Scorpion Charm, we're going to need that item to do it. We're just going to grab all the stuff for Silivus beforehand, so to stay off some, to stay off some doing the whole back and forth thing. Uh, but now it's going to go continue up this path to go get a bunch of golden seeds and enter the sealed tunnel. I recommend not taking the left path and just running straight up the middle here because going through the left is going to aggro the rune bear and yeah, that's not good to have. I'll skip that part because yeah, it's just a straight line. You don't need to like bother with that stuff at all. You just run straight in the middle. You're not going to get hit by anything. It's per perfectly okay. Um, run all the way to the church over here to pick up the golden order seal, which is going to be the best seal to have for a faith int build. I cut it out because it was very obvious as to where to go to go get it. But yeah, go teleport back to the grace of which we were just at, and then go head to the left this time so we can go into the sealed tunnel, which is going to go access um, a bunch more smithing stones. We can get some smithing fives here, and we can get the bell bearing for the smithing threes and fours.
Now to maximize your smithing stone weapons, you're gonna have to pick up every single one of these smithing fives. Um, we're gonna pick up all the ones in this dungeon and the Celia crystal tunnel. So definitely like memorize the patterns of which I run to go pick up these stones. Because if you miss even one, you're not going to have enough smithing stone to level up and you probably have to go to like another dungeon or another location to pick up another smithing five, which is not that big of a deal. Um, anyway, once you hit the big, uh, the bottom of this location, definitely quit out because there's going to be a bunch of enemies that will overwhelm you. So they'll just reset those enemy positions. But basically we're down here so we can go break this little statue and we need this virgin abductor to do it. Um, stand to the right side of the statue and then roll to the left and then the, and the, the virgin abductor should break it. And then three smithing sixes right there. So that will help you get to plus 16, I think it is, or plus 15. I forget exactly what we're going to be getting to. Um, but if you don't pick up all the smithing fives, I think the most you get to is plus 13, which is still more than enough to go kill bosses like Radan and Goldfree. Um, you might have a little bit of problems against Mog, uh, Mog, I mean. But at that point, you can just use a Sombra-based weapon or the Sombra-based weapon of choice, and you probably could have it at plus 10 as well. So whatever weapon they actually do decide to go with, you could just use that to kill Mog. Unless it's a Mogwin Sacred Spear, then yeah. But we're going to have different ways to kill Mog that are very easy anyway, so it's not going to be that big of a deal. Um, but as for this boss, you don't really need to kill it at all, because this one actually doesn't give you anything of importance. It gives you like some shitty-ass weapon. But we're just going to kill it because it just beats having to like, you know, just run back, I guess. And it saves us some more souls or runes, and it gives us some more runes. But basically, the way to kill it is a spam charged heavy attacks. It gets stun locked after the first one, and you can get a guaranteed follow-up heavy attack. And as it's standing back up, you use Determination to buff again and just keep rinsing, repeating. It's not going to be that challenging. Um, anyway, um, go hand in all the bell bearings of what you picked up. Um, pick up the three gold pickled foul feet off patches. I picked up a stone sword key there because we're going to need a whole bunch. We're going to get some more opportunities to buy it later, so you don't really need to buy it right now um, if you don't have the runes for it. But the most important thing is definitely picking up um, the gold pickled foul feet, picking up enough smithing threes, and picking up 12 smithing fours. If you've been following this playthrough and you have like the exact same amount of smithing threes that I had, then you only needed to buy six. There are more opportunities to get some more smithing threes, um, of which you probably don't need to buy that much. But um, if you're keeping track of what you have, just buy the necessary amounts basically. And then go level up your weapon, of which your net weapon should be about plus 13 right now, I think it is. Um, but yeah, teleport back to the Church of the Plague where Millicent is and go head down this way. Just be careful climbing down those rocks because you actually can die to fall damage. And for that branch, I definitely recommend getting off your horse to cl climb down. But the reason as to why we're here is to pick up the Knight's Comet um, spell, which is like probably the best sorcery in the entire game. We also can get the staff to boost the damage for it as well. Um, and we're going to just pick up a Golden Seed and there's some more intelligence-based stuff. So basically this whole like path thing is just purely for like the intelligence-based things. But there's other stuff though which we can get that will benefit other playthroughs too. Um, but yeah, there's the Staff of the Lost, which actually does boost the damage of the Knight-based Sorcery. So you can just throw it in your offhand if you actually did want to boost the damage of Knight Comet. It's not going to be the highest damaging Staff to have um, if you wanted to use other different types of spells. Um, but the Staff of which we are going to be using mainly is going to be the Meteorite Staff, because you don't have to upgrade it. It already comes like fully maxed out. And it's pretty good throughout the entire game. It's obviously not going to be the best one to have at later levels. But the fact that you don't have to upgrade it is really good. And we're going to be getting it pretty soon. But yeah, I lit up the grace at the Celia Tunnel. You can go clear out the dungeon at this point right now, but there's probably a couple more things that we can get. Some more buffs like Crag Blade and Flame Gummy Strength. And once we grab those, then we can go back to that dungeon. Because in that dungeon, there's going to be some more um, Smithing Fives, and there's going to be a Sombra Six as well. But we did just pick up a Sombra Five, which at this point now we have the ability to go get a plus five Sombra weapon. Um, now at this point, we're going to go to the Sages, the Ruin Sages, I forgot what it was called. Um, but there's going to be Rock Sling, which Rock Sling is going to be another really solid projectile. If you're going up against enemies that are resist to magic, using Rock Sling is going to be pretty decent because it does mainly physical. Um, I just picked up that armor set because, you know, why not? It's cool fashion, I guess. But yeah, the Meteorite stuff is definitely what you want to pick up. It's going to be like hidden in the corner right there. If you're going to go with an intelligence build, definitely recommend just using that one. But yeah, now at this point, we're going to go run all the way through Kaled. Um, pick up the map. There's going to be another merchant that we talked to. Um, we can actually unlock the Dragon Communion um, Church, Cathedral, whatever it's called. And we can go get Cragblade also. Yeah, at this point I was like wondering if I should actually go hit up the Grace at the Cathedral. I was like, should I go back there? I was like, yeah, might as well. Just show you guys that you can actually go get 
some pretty cool stuff. Now, honestly, if you've killed Grail, you would have like, I think it's five Dragon Hearts from killing Grail. And those will be enough to go buy a decent amount um, of the Dragon um, Incantations. I'll show you which ones I buy later on in the playthrough after I do kill Grail. Um, but yeah, that merchant did sell a cracked pot for like 1500 runes, just to like sell one of your golden runes to get that amount. So you can buy it. A lot of other merchants actually sold it for cheaper, but I just bought that one because, you know, I was right there and I had the runes. So might as well. But yeah, now at this point we're going to go all the way down to the bottom. We can go straight to Radan right now, but we want to get a bit more damage before we do that because... You want, to, well, you want to make him as easy as possible, but you definitely want to pick up Crag Blade, which is going to be off this Scarab right here. Go hit up, like, hug the right side of that cliff, because if you go hit up the left side of that cliff, the Scarab is going to run off the ledge. So just follow that path thing. But yeah, headed back to the Summon Water Village, Grace, because now we're going to go red, uh, run to Caled. But there's going to be a few things to pick up along the way. We're going to run to, like, the right side of Caled, or the beginning part of it, at least. Uh, but here's going to be the Green Turtle Talisman. You're not really going to be using this much, but, like, you know... It's a good talisman to have, so you might as well pick it up. Anyway, at this church, there's not going to be a sacred tier, but there is going to be an invasion, so that's why we got dismounted off the horse right there. But this NPC is going to get us the sacred scorpion charm, which is obviously going to be very good for those faith type builds if you're using some holy based spells, which hopefully holy damage is not complete doo-doo trash in the DLC. It shouldn't be, right? I don't know. Hopefully, like, at the very least, I just hope it's just as good as the other elements. That's the only thing that I hope for. And hopefully there's actually some really good holy spells, because the holy spells we have in this game are, um, not that good. But yeah, they hit up the Rotsview Balcony Grace, and just continue heading right so we can go grab Flame Grant Me Strength. Now, Flame Grant Me Strength is obviously mainly going to be for faith-based builds, but being that it actually does boost um, physical damage alongside fire damage, Obviously, you can benefit it, uh, benefit of using it with any type of build that does use physical damage, which is like 90% of them. Um, now, the problem is that it does have a bit of a faith requirements, but it's only 15 faith. So, as long as you have at least 10 faith, you can use something like the Two Finger Heirloom Talisman. Just have that equipped and you could just use it. The way I like to use it is just equip the Two Finger Heirloom before like the boss. Go use Flame Going Strength and then switch back to your main talisman. It is like a little bit of effort, but it, you know, it's 20% more damage and you get faster stamina recovery speed as well. So you might as well do it. Um, now I did pick up a smithing four along the way. That wasn't that necessary because there's going to be a bunch of smithing fours that we can get in the next dungeon. Um, but we're just going to head to the smoldering wall. There's like three different ways you can actually run to the smoldering wall, Grace. You can go either through the Rot's view balcony, the Grace that we're at initially that's next to the swamp. We could go there. Um, but we're just going to go head east from the smoldering wall, Grace, so we can go to the abandoned cave because this... Cave is going to net us the Gold Scarab Talisman, which is going to be very important to have to just further enhance our rune farming or just getting more runes in general to just help us level up even faster. Um, but yeah, at this point, definitely go equip Crag Blade, Flame Grammy Strength, have Golden Vow onto your dagger, because now we're going to be fighting a boss, and this boss can be kind of annoying, and there's no stake of Marika nearby. Um, but I didn't pick up a lantern, so it's going to be hard to try and follow where I'm going. Basically, for the most part, is that just hug right. Unless you get to this room, then just run straight. <laughs> Um, there's no like, there's no branching paths in that room anyway. But if you do see a branching path, you just hug right the entire time. Even here, I'm running to the left because there's the Venomous Fang up here, which is actually the best poison weapon in the game. If you want to go with a poison build with like an arcane type build, that's going to be the weapon to use. It's really good to have. So I just picked it up because, you know, why not? I was right next to it. Now, normally that enemy doesn't actually follow you. So I didn't actually have enough time to use all my buffs like Crag Blade outside of the boss room. Um, but yeah, this is the same strats, this charged heavy spam. You should kill it pretty quickly, and you have enough health to tank a bunch of attacks, so it's not going to be the biggest deal. If you die, you just run back. Um, by the way, I forgot to mention, but at the beginning of the dungeon, there's going to be like that poison that slows you down a whole bunch. Don't roll through it, because obviously you'll end up getting proc with Scarlet Rot. What I recommend is just, tele is just turning around and just backstepping instead, because you can backstep pretty quickly through that swamp, and you won't get proc with Scarlet Rot. You could just put in like another dagger with like Quick step and quick step could work perfectly fine as well. Anyway, we're going back to the um, Celia tunnel to finally go kill this boss and pick up all the smithing fives. There's three there right at the beginning, two on that little hill and one in the corner. This dungeon is beyond toxic. Those enemies are so fucking cringe. God, I hate them so much. Um, you don't need to pick up those cuck stones, by the way. I just did that because, you know, parkour, why not? 
But yeah, there's like some more smithing floors in this location, but the smithing fives is what we need. Just memorize the locations of all of these. Um, if you don't pick them all up, it's not going to be that big of a deal, as I mentioned. It just might make Radan fight just a little bit harder. But even then, it's still not going to be that bad. Because even if you miss a few, you're just going to have like a couple like extra levels less than what you normally would have. Um, but there was the Faithful Canvas Talisman there, which does give you 4% more damage to your incantations, which is not much. Um, in terms of killing this enemy right here, you don't need to kill it because you already have our Smithing Fives. Um, but it does give you a Somber 6, which is nice. But the way to kill it is just stay to its right side. Just hit its right leg, or its left leg, I mean. Hit it three times, it'll get a Poise Break, and just hit it in the head twice, and then get the Repose, and it should just die. If you don't, if you fuck up the combo somehow, you should be okay, you're doing more than enough damage. Um, but yeah, go back to EG, go level up your weapon to plus whatever it is, um, then go back to the Stormhill Shack. At that point, the girl should leave, I forgot her name is, Roderica, that's her name. Um, she should leave and leave a Golden Seed, so pick up the Golden Seed at the Shack as well. Um, I picked up Wild Strikes there, we're not going to use Wild Strikes Ash War, but it's a good Ash War to have, so you might as well pick it up. And now we're just going to go ahead to Margaret and kill him, because there's some things that are past them that we need. And obviously we need another, another Talisman Pouch as well. Because I definitely recommend having all four talismans, talisman slots for the DLC. Uh, but yeah, we have a uh, plus, whatever it is, a plus 15 or plus 16 weapon at this point. And yeah, it just makes quick work of him. I um, definitely recommend, I completely forgot to mention, but every single time that you kill a boss, this switch to the gold scarab talisman, because obviously it takes a little bit of time for the runes to actually come into your inventory. So you have about like three or four seconds to switch, or depending on the boss, but in most cases you have about three seconds to switch to a talisman, so to switch to the gold scarab talisman, it's about like 25%, I think it is, more runes. Which that's just, that's just more runes for free, basically. So every single time you kill a boss, just get in the habit of switching to the gold scarab talisman. Um, anyway, running through this section is not that challenging. At the beginning, you just like walk up to the, the left side and then just strafe right, and just keep running, hugging the right wall. Um, don't really dodge. If you do get hit, then then spam dodge afterwards. You should survive like a couple of attacks. You have you have a pretty decent amount of vigor at this point. And um, for the second barrage of arrows, just like jump to the right just before you reach the top. Basically just follow the gameplay as to what I did. But it should work that way perfectly fine. Uh, but now at this point we're gonna go pick up the Black Flame stuff. So heading down here, it's going to net us the God Slayer Seal and the Black Flame um, Prayer Book. So if you have your Faith type builds, this is going to be very nice to have. The God Slayer Seal is going to be the best seal to have for Faith builds if you have less than 69 Faith. Above 69 Faith, the Earth Tree Seal is going to be better. Now the downside is that it is going to require Smithing Stones, and if you want to get a max level Smithing base weapon, you're probably going to have to at least go to the Mountaintops to do it. And we're also going to run back to the main part of the Stormhill Castle and go through this little section which is also going to require a stone sword key and gets the black wet blade or the iron red blade which does unlock uh, strength, dexterity and quality based infusions and there is the mystery cord there as well which is like the best dagger for critical attacks. So if you want to go like with a critical attack build or just any build that requires stance breaking you can switch to the mystery cord and you can get a lot of damage um, but yeah another smithing based weapon so you're going to have to go clear out the game a bit more than what I actually show you, if you actually did want to do that. Uh, but now we're going to go kill Radan, just go back to the grace of which I showed you, and then go talk to Jaren, or whatever his name is, and then go through the portal to try to fight Radan. Now right at the beginning, as soon as you spawn into the boss room, just run backwards, get on your horse, and run all the way backwards until he despawns. Because when he despawns and he respawns again, he actually won't do the whole arrow shenanigans. Um, but then while he's running towards you, just go do your buffs and stuff like that. I'm just like slowing down the gameplay back to normal speed. To show you exactly how to fight this boss, it's pretty simple. Basically when the fight starts, he's just gonna like charge towards you. He do like a few different attacks. Most of the attacks he will just like miss, you can just be directly underneath him. And just constantly spam a bunch of charged heavy attacks. I missed one there, he probably would have got one cycled if I just didn't miss. Um, but yeah, it's perfectly fine. You'll be pretty, plenty over leveled enough for this boss fight. All you're gonna do is like wait for him to buff as well, because when he does his buffs, you get like a lot of openings. Especially like in the second phase when he does this. Uh, but if you are struggling with him for any reason, you can go summon all the NPCs. Um, honestly, you probably leave Alexander alive, because you haven't really benefited off using the Warrior's Jar Shot at all. So you could have left Alexander alive and just kill him at this point. Um, but definitely pick up a, um, or use the Gold Pickled Falfoot after that boss fight as well. 
It's not that necessary. I would probably recommend saving them instead for like the rune flowing method that I'm going to unlock later on. But definitely at least equip the gold scarab talisman though. Um, and I think at that point I went to talk back to the two fingers. I forgot what I talked to, I guess. I know what I did. What did I do? I'm lost now. At, at least I leveled up, I think. <laughs> Which I think I put more points in this health. I think I had like at least 30 Vigor at this point. I'll tell you guys how to like level up your builds. Or um, just make your builds at least. Probably like at the end. But early on you definitely just want like a lot of Vigor. Vigor and Stamina. Your damaging stats don't matter that much. If you have like a particular weapon in mind of what you want to go with, just meet the minimum requirements and just put the rest of your points into health and stamina. Anyway, at this point, I think we're going to go try and do various quest lines. So I did talk to the fingers, yes. You need to speak to the fingers to go access various quest line. But yeah, just follow the path thing because we've got to kill this NPC. Because this NPC is needed to go um, do various quest line, unless you're doing it online. Uh, but this way is just much easier and much quicker. Because past this section, we're going to go get the gold of our spell as well. Um, this guy's a bit of a pain in the dick, so I recommend just spamming just running attacks, because if you try to do charge heavy attacks, you might do Lion's Claw, and he probably just end up killing you in one hit. It's probably not one hit, but close enough to it. But he actually does drop the Great Stars, which is an amazing weapon, and he does give you a Sombra 6 as well. So you should have like a few Sombra 6s already. So at this point, we actually have access to a plus 6 Sombra weapon. So if you have a particular weapon in mind that you can get early on, you can go ahead and use that. Um, if he did die to that NPC, um... You're going to need a bunch of the recusant Bloody Fingers, which is why I recommend buying them early on off those NPCs. Because typically, if you were to do a Varus questline, he would give you five. We have to go speak to him first, and it's a lot of backtracking and stuff like that. So I recommend just picking up, up the vendors that you can purchase them at. I know the Patches vendor actually does sell it as well. Um, but there, as you saw, I just picked up Golden Bell, which is a nice spell to have. What's well, like again, actually a really good spell to have. For all types of faith builds, I recommend just using it all the time. It's just more damage and more defenses. And it stacks with a lot of other things because it's an aura buff. Um, the reason why I cut the gameplay after I picked up the Golden Vow is because an NPC spawns there. And I died to the NPC. And we, we ain't got to see that, so it's fine. Um, anyway, I went back to Outer Plateau to pick up a the Sacred Tier. I don't know why I did that. That was like in the middle of doing a quest line. But <laughs> yeah, pick up that Sacred Tier as well. It's kind of just out of the way. You have to go pick it up and like teleport. But if you do the the Naga Keeper guy's quest line, I forgot his name. But if you do his quest line, um, you can go access um, the uh, Eleonora will spawn there, and you can do her quest line to get the Eleonora's pole blade, and go get um, the purifying crystal too. Um, anyway, you got to go speak to Varro, exhaust his dialogue. He'll give you the fingers to go do the invasion, but being that you've already done the invasion, just go like quit out and respawn again. He'll give you the cloth to soak in the maiden's blood. Um, and next to that section, there's going to be the blood flame blade spell. You can go kill that scarab to pick it up. So yeah, I definitely recommend getting that. That's a really cool spell to have, especially if you're going to be using the bloodhound thing. But yes, now at this point, we're going to go kill, or going to go soak the blood of the cloth in one of the maidens. There's like a few maidens that you can do. The quickest one and the best way to do it is by... Um, going to the lady right at the beginning of the weapon potential. You can just go kill her. That's like the fastest way to do it. Um, but we're going to go get the one at next to the Vike church because there's actually a few things along the way that we can pick up that we can benefit off as well. Uh, one is going to be like just some of the best crystal tiers in the entire game, like which is directly ahead of us. And just outside the church is obviously going to be a sacred tier. So we might as well just pick up those things and just soak the blood at the same time. So it is more convenient, I guess. But yeah, you don't really need to do all these buffing stuff, but like, you know, why not? It's cool, I guess. A lot of damage is nice, but it's just an Urtra avatar that's early game, so... You'd make very quick work of it, but that will actually give you the Magic, Holy, and the Lightning tier. Um, you get the Fire tier in Caleb. I'll show you where to get it later on. But yeah, that tier is definitely... All those tiers are some of the best in the entire game. Any single time you go in with an Elemental build, just use one of those. That's 15% more damage for 3 minutes, which is just stupid. Uh, but now we're going to go head through the village so we can go to get the sacred tier and go soak the blood. But basically we end up going off the horse because Vike will end up invading here. And just run straight to the church, pick up the sacred tier, and just go soak the blood in that corpse. Um, I skipped the gameplay against Vike because he just gives you the Vike's war spear, which is like a shitty weapon. You don't really need it. I did kill him though, if anyone must know. I didn't lose that fight. 
Um, but yeah, go back to Vare and go exhaust his dialogue. He'll chop off your finger to get the bloody finger, which is an invasion tool. Um, but exhaust his dialogue again to get the pure blood knight medal that gives you access to the Mogwin's palace. Which at this point, we can obviously go kill Moog and we can go get a somber 10 as well. And there's some other things that we can go grab that are helpful for bleed builds. And there's a bunch more golden seeds here as well. Um, and this is obviously where you do like the best rune farming mechanic, which I'll tell you about later on in the video. But yeah, this is another place where you'd probably benefit of using a lantern. Um, I kind of know where I'm going. It's still like a narrow path. There's like one branching path, but you just like stick to the right side kind of. Um, and then just follow the main path afterwards. Okay, now I did say that this was going to be a glitchless playthrough, um, but I'm going to use one glitch against Moog. <laughs> um, we don't need to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it without glitches, but there is a way to go kill Moog without actually fighting him at all, which I'll show you how to do. It's not going to be that challenging, um, but yeah, at this point, we're just going to pick up the Sombra Stone, which that's going to be plus 10 to our weapon. Um, which that's going to be the only one that we can get, I think. Everything else that's past that section... Well, every other somber stone is like later in the game. Um, but there actually is a golden seed here as well. Um, the funny thing is that golden seed is actually interchangeable with the other golden seed that's later down. Um, if you actually reset the area at this point, you actually lose access to the other golden seed. So you actually can run there straight away to actually go pick it up. Um, but you can pick up that Newman rune. There's other golden runes along the way. This is just going to be more runes. Just follow the path. If you've missed that jump, you'll end up surviving as you saw. And at this point, there's going to be a couple of invaders that spawn in. If you go too far to the left or too far to the right, you'll get hit by an invader. So just follow this path because what we're actually going to do is go hit the far invader because that one is actually going to give us the white mask. If you're going to go with a bleed build, this is going to be a very good mask to have because it kind of works like the blood exaltation talisman and that when you proc bleed nearby an enemy, it would end up just giving you more damage. But yeah, that NPC in the corner is going to net you the white mask. I just recommend staying next to the cliff and just trying to hit him off. And that's the golden seed I was talking about. If you ended up dying to that NPC, you would actually lose access to that golden seed. So what I kind of recommend is probably going straight to the golden seed first and then picking up the white mask later on. Um, you actually can access that white mask area um, via the grace and it's running around. It's actually not that hard to get to that location. You don't actually have to jump off and do that whole platforming thing like I did. It was just like a faster way to get there. Um, but yeah, now we're actually going to do the Moog glitch. We're actually going to be two different ways to do this. This is going to be the glitch method and I'm just going to show you how to fight him legit. And I'll give you some tips on to how to do that. But basically, just like follow the pathing here. Just drop that. It's not that hard of a jump. It looks pretty challenging, but it's not that bad, I promise you. You just jump that little ledge. You just kind of like jump around and there's like hug rights. And then once you go fall down, you jump again. Just follow the pathing. Um, but one thing to keep in mind, if you do die on the way like down while doing this, you're going to have to go back again. Because basically how it works, you have to trigger the boss fight. You have to quit out afterwards. And then you have to do this whole thing. Because basically what we're going to be doing is falling down this hole that's going to basically like make us infinitely fall. And it's going to like deload the whole map and all the other enemies are going to fall down and they're going to die as well. Well, they're going to die before we die. Because there's a way for us to exploit not falling off or not dying to full damage before they do. It's kind of hard to explain, but uh, <laughs> you'll see. But basically just follow this path. There'll be a little hole right here that we actually got to fall down to. Before you do... Make sure you have the gold scarab talisman equipped and you do use a gold pickled foul foot. And basically what to do is fall down this hole and make sure you double jump as you're falling down as well. So like when you fall down, hit a double jump and then spam an attack. So make sure you have a weapon equipped at this point. And I was just going to speed up the gameplay, but you just keep spamming your attacks and I'm probably going to skip it as well. It lasts for about a minute. So you just got to keep the spam in the button for a minute. The enemies will like all just die in the whole arena, as you can see, I have like 200,000 souls now, then the boss will die, which will end up giving me 600,000. And after that happens, you can just open up the map and just teleport backwards or back to where you want, uh, or any, any way you want really. And now we have like 800,000 runes, get at least 40 vigor at this point and just put points into your damaging stats. If you have like a strength base build, I'm using like a larger weapon, go into 20 endurance. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna show you how to fight him legit now, if you were to do that, because if you didn't want to do that glitch, it's honestly not that hard to do. It might have seemed a bit like annoying, but um, you could just fight him legit, but yeah. Either way, it still works perfectly fine. But yeah, to fight this guy, it's just the same thing. Just spam charged R2s. 
Every single time he does the buff, you can just like stay to his left side because it just won't hit you. It's basically just like free attacks. He'll buff at least three times. Um, every single time that he finishes a combo going backwards like that, when he does like that backstepping attack, that's always going to be an opening. He doesn't do an attack afterwards. That's only if he does like the backstepping swipe. That's basically it. Um, and the one where he slams it into the ground as well. But you'll probably do it a bit later on, only in the second phase. Now, as I mentioned, there is a way to counter this attack. Um, and that's if you get the purifying crystal tier, but we have plenty of flasks at this point. We have like 10, which is like more than enough to counter this boss fight. A lot of the boss fight is like memorizing the attacks. For that slamming attack, you can just strafe it. You just walk around, get a bunch of free attacks off. Um, for that attack, you can just strafe that one as well. You can just like walk behind him and it could just miss. The timing is a bit weird, but you can strafe it. I just canceled it by just staggering him, I guess. Um, for that attack, you want to roll backwards. And for that attack, you want to roll backwards as well. Because otherwise, if you roll forwards, you're going to get hit by that whole blood flaming attack. And it's just not good. Not good. It's much more consistent rolling it backwards. And I got hit there because I was being greedy. So yeah. <laughs> just only attack when you have an opening. Almost died there to the blood flame, but we clutched up, so that's perfectly fine. But yeah, as you can see, it wasn't that bad. As long as you have your buffs, spam your charged heavy attacks. Honestly, I recommend actually fighting him instead of going for the glitch, because if you can't kill Moog, you're not going to have much hope in the DLC, I'm not going to lie. The DLC bosses are going to be way harder than Moog, so I recommend just killing him. Um, but yes, afterwards, obviously go level up. Make sure you pop a gold pickled foul foot and have the gold scarab equipped. And when you do kill him... Just to get a bunch more runes. I just like skip that little section because you're just running up a big giant, like, you know, cliff. Not cliff, um, staircase. That's the one. It's like a straight path all the way to the gray. So just pick up the golden seeds along the way. And now directly right of this section, there's going to be like a little lake. That's where Bogart would spawn if you do his quest line. So if you exhaust his dialogue, go buy the Rhea's necklace, give it to Rhea, go speak to him again. He's going to teleport to that section to the right of where I am right now. And you can go speak to him there, and you actually will... And when you kill him there, you can get the Iron Balls, but you also can go access the Boiled Crab and the Boiled Prawn, which are going to be some damage negation buffs. Um, I probably... I don't know. They're not really that useful, but they're still pretty good to have. Pretty, they're actually probably really decent for the DLC, because they're probably going to hit pretty hard. So I probably recommend doing that, honestly. It would probably just involve having to run all the way to the Altus Plateau right at the beginning, and not killing anything, and then going back to kill the stuff. Um, anyway, we're finding the Draconic Tree Sentinel, and as you can see... Um, he's not standing a chance. He should have died to that attack, but I didn't actually have my Axe Talisman equipped. I had the um, the Gold Scarab still equipped, as you saw. But the boss fight is just three charged heavy attacks. He gets Poise Broken. You hit him with another heavy attack, goes to the second phase, and that's like basically three more heavy attacks guaranteed. So yeah, you just basically just follow exactly what the gameplay was like. Um, I recommend actually getting the Talisman patch before fighting the Draconic Tree Sentinel. Honestly, it doesn't make a difference. Um, but yeah, after killing Moog, that means you killed two Great Rune bosses, you now have access to Lendell, and you can get a Talisman pouch as well. Um, what did I buy there? <laughs> I didn't even know what I bought there. Why did I go back there to buy stuff? I think I bought like a, um, a Stone Sword key for some reason, I don't know why. I think I bought the Longbow as well. The Longbow is going to be used for a um, the Rune Farming method at Mogwin's Palace. Um, anyway, we're just like running through Lendell at this point. Just scour the rooftops. Um, there's going to be a stone sword key there. And some more like golden runes along the way as well. You can just pick those up. It's just like the, the safest way to go travel Lendell is just via the rooftops. Um, this Erd tree, you can go kill it to go get um, the Lord's Ring. It actually does drop the Lord's Ring, which is basically 50,000 runes. So I recommend, I recommend killing him as well if you wanted some more runes. But now at this point, we're just going to go run all the way through. It's just a narrow path. You can't really mess it up. It's just a bunch of jumping. There's not really a way to mess it up unless you're me, who's an absolute fucking idiot. Um, but yeah, I just like skipped that part just running backwards. But yeah, <laughs> I just missed the jump. But yeah, it just leads up to that grace. There's like no way you can miss it. Um, anyway, continuing forth, pick up that golden seed. But the reason why we're here in Lendell is because we're going to go grab, um, obviously, another talisman pouch which is obviously very handy. And we're going to go grab the... What's this again? The Sanctified Wet Blade. And just to the left of that section, I missed it, but there's actually going to be another Newman's Rune in that room, which I think is like 20k or 15k. And in this room is going to be the Coded Sword, which is going to be one of the better faith weapons in the game. 
Um, it does do holy damage, which hopefully holy damage is not that bad in the DLC. But um, the credit sword is actually really amazing. It gets a pure faith scaling. Doesn't get any um, scalings or requirements in any of the other stats. And it gets like really high stance damage here. It's like 35 stance damage for the weapon skill. And it's like very quick, not that expensive, and it goes pretty far. Um, but yeah, we're just going to go continue forth back to the grace, go all the way up the stairs to pick up the Ritual Shield Talisman and the Star Fist. Uh, the Ritual Shield Talisman does give you a bunch more damage negation at full health. It does work nicely when you have the Ritual um, Sword Talisman as well. And the Star Fist is just a better version of the Iron Balls. Um, the difference being is that it just does more damage and gets bleed. But we're not going to be using it though because we don't have the Smithing Stones to upgrade it. So if you did want to use that weapon in the DLC, I recommend having to go progress a bit more of the game, like killing Morgoth and killing Fire Giant to get some more smithing stones. Um, but yeah, now we have the um, Godfrey, the first Elden Lord. I have no idea what's going on. My brain is like fried right now. I have no fucking clue, I'm not gonna lie. Um, yeah, go kill that boss. You should have like enough damage. I was gonna explain how the fight works and like different strats. I got hit a couple times because I was being stupid. Um, but yeah, the fight's not that bad. <laughs> Um, you don't actually need to go up this way. This is going to be like a damage or health regen spell. Um, we don't, we're not going to kill Morgoth, so... I think I killed this Black Knife Assassin, because why not? I think I might come back to that Grace to go pick up the Bolt to Grand Sax, because that's like an amazing weapon to have. Uh, where did I teleport to? The game just cut. Okay, we're back here. Um, why am I here? I don't know. Oh, we're going to get the Scorpion Charms. Cool. Oh, we're towards the end! No way! I've been yapping for an hour, bro. I'm like so dead. Um, but yeah, go back to the Earth Tree Gazing Hill. I'm never doing this shit ever again. I fucking hate walkthroughs. <laughs> but you look at that. I was like two hours into the playthrough. So like within two hours, you actually killed Moog. Which is pretty good. But we have like all the talisman pouches unlocked. Basically like all the weapons. We have like a access to a max level weapon at this point. Oh no, we have the Sombra 7s yet. No. You could have got the Sombra 7s earlier. I mean, you can guys can go get it earlier. But yeah, at this point, just run to this dungeon because it's going to be the Lightning Scorpion Charm. I should have explained that instead of yapping. Um, but yeah, we're going to get the Lightning Scorpion Charm and the Fire Scorpion Charm, which both are conveniently very close to each other. But yeah, just follow this path. Um, don't get hit by a slug. I did, and I just cut it very stealthily. Um, you guys saw nothing. But yeah, it's basically just a linear path. Go up that ladder. I just cut this, this running up a ladder. Um, but there is the Lightning Scorpion Charm. And now we're going to go get the Fire Scorpion Charm. We're going to get all the Scorpion Charms because they're all really nice to have. Because you never know, who knows if you're going to go through the DLC, then you find some really cool weapon. You might not think you're going to go with a Lightning-based build, but what if you see like a really cool Lightning weapon, then you're going to go want to use it. Um, anyway, we're just going to go follow this path. It's a very narrow path. Pick up the Golden Seed. Just to that dungeon that you saw in that Fog Gate, that one actually does net you the Kindred of Rot Exaltation Talisman. If you're going to go with a Poison build, I recommend clearing out that dungeon. I probably should have done it, honestly, but... um. There's not many poison builds in this game, but if you did want to go get that, I recommend that you do. Um, anyway, just continuing along this path. I did do some more cutting, but it was just like a narrow path, but you can't really go wrong. But up here is going to be the Fire Scorpion Charm. And I think after this, we're going to work on getting the Magic Scorpion Charm. Yeah, let's go teleport back to the EG Bonfire or EG Grace. We're at 2 hours and 11 minutes. Pretty good time. I think I skipped part of this section as well, because it's just literally just following the main path. You can't really go wrong. You just run in a straight line, yeah. <laughs> You're just like running all the way straight to that grace. I think I don't cut this section because there is branching paths. Yeah, this one is not a straight, oh, it is a straight line, but it is there is a branching path, so. But the reason that's why we're here is to do the Magic Scorpion Charm. There are some other things that you can go grab as well. Yeah, I just like skipped the elevator. Um, there's a Golden Seed. Um, what else is there? After this boss, which was just up the stairs, by the way. We're in the boss room right now, but I just skipped running up the stairs. But yeah, this boss is just going to die in a few hits because, you know, it's an early game boss and we're at a higher level. That's now dead. Fantastic. Um, just past the section is going to be the Chilling Mist Ash of War. If you don't have an intelligence build, I recommend picking this up because... It's going to be a very quick way to proc Frost. If you have Intelligence, you can have access to Frost pretty easily with a bunch of different spells. Um, but you can just put Chilling Mist onto a Dagger, use it at the start of the boss fight. It'll debuff an enemy to make them take 20% more damage. And it'll just do a flat like 10% damage as well. It's really good. Um, anyway, go hit up this little like shady dungeon 
that's hidden by a couple of invisible walls. I'm um, definitely, I'll uh, read the message as well that's down there. That's very important because that's for um, Salivus's quest line. That's like little Salivus's like weird dungeon that we, I don't know. He's a fucking weirdo. Um, yeah, go up the fucking ladder. <laughs> go up the elevator, speak to Rani. I'm like losing all, I should have done this in like increments. Why am I doing this in one sitting? Oh my God. But yeah, just speak to Rani. Go down. I did like a cool little trick where you can like just jump off the elevator and save like 10 seconds of my time. Normally Blight would be here as well, but being that we already killed Redon, he's going to be in knock run. Um, but yeah, just go speak to those two, exhaust their dialogue, rest at the grace. And now we're going to go run to Saluvis's rise, which is just to the right of Rani's rise. And that's where we're going to go access the magic scorpion charm. We already picked up the amber um, starlight thingy, and then we already have the starlight shards to purchase the other puppet. So we're good at this point. We're just going to go exhaust his dialogue, go speak, um, go get to the potion. So Lewis's potion, and we're going to give it to Gideon. Now, to give it to Gideon, he's going to be in the round table hold. He'll be in this room. If he's not in this room, that means you haven't spoken to him yet. You have to go to speak to him at the round table, like initially, where he's in the main room. Then just go reset the area, go speak to him at the round table hold. Um, go click the dialogue option to where it says like Salubus or something about Salubus. Then give him Salubus's potion. Then come back to Salubus and just go exhaust all of his other dialogue options. Um, when you go to buy the puppet, definitely buy the Jarite puppet. That is the one that you'd need to buy. Because both of them end up being purchasable. But the Jarite puppet is the more expensive one. So you need to buy both to do the quest line. But yeah, basically you talk to him, exhaust the dialogue. You got to quit out like two times. So um, after you buy the puppet, exhaust the dialogue. Quit out. I don't think you got to talk to him again, but just do it anyway. And just quit out twice, basically. And you click the option, I want to get a new puppet. And he might give you the option to buy one. Yeah, obtain a puppet. Then you buy the other version with the two Starlight Shards that you have. Um, if you accidentally bought that one, you got to go pick up another Starlight Shard from somewhere else. But just keep exhausting the new dialogue that he has. So every like new dialogue option, this is one of those. And then there you go, Magic Scorpion Charm. It's not that bad to grab. It's just like, how do people figure this shit the fuck out, honestly? <laughs> Um, anyway, now we're going to go grab the, the flame tier. That is why we're here. So go back to the rocks view balcony, go head left, go kill this Ur tree. Every single time he does a slamming attack, just roll behind him. Don't roll backwards because that rot AOE will fuck you up. And now we're going back to the church of Ella, which we're going to go buy some cracked pots. Going to go buy that cookbook, which that one actually unlocks the holy pots. That's the reason why we buy cooked pots as well. I bought the torch because that's going to be nice to have to reset the frost on Grail when I go kill Grail, because we're going to be using the Death Poker to do it. And I bought a bunch of arrows as well. You definitely want to stack up on a bunch of arrows, because that's going to be very handy to go farm the bird, which is the best rune farming method in the game, of which I'll talk about later. But yeah, go teleport back to the Church of Plague, because that's going to be the best way to go access the Death Rite bird. Um, definitely have on the Faith tier, have the Holy tier on, have Golden Vow equipped, put on the Sacred Scorpion charm, craft the holy pots if you need more than like five go speak to the other merchants go to um stonevale castle just before godric and there's a there's a room that actually has more cracked pots you could probably have about like eight for this location um now i shouldn't have jumped down there stay before that jump that i made to stay up the very top and you can just snipe the bird with the holy pots but for some reason i dropped down but as you see it dies in like three or four hits so like <laughs> it's not that big of a deal but I could have safely done it from the very top. But for some reason, I thought if I jumped down there, he probably wasn't going to aggro. Because I feel like I did that last time. Um, but he did. So yeah, probably stay at the very top and just try and like Kobe him. Don't lock on when you do it because you're going to miss. So you have to kind of like lock off. So it's probably is safer to go drop down and just fight him. Because you're going to have a lot of health anyway. So um, anyway, now we have the Death Poker. Definitely just put on the Talismans and Crystal Tears to meet the requirements for it. And because this is going to be the fastest way to kill Grail. Now we don't need to kill Grail. Because literally at this point, we have the Mogwin's Palace unlocked. So we actually have a faster rune farming method. But um, just to show you guys how to kill him, I kind of like forgot to reallocate my flasks, so I ran out of FP. So now I'm just like using Bleed Grease on the Kestis to kill him. But this is how you go kill a Grail and farm him. As soon as Grail is dead, just run back to the Grace and rest at it. And you'll get the runes for Grail, but she'll, she'll just respawn. So you can just keep fighting him over and over again. And but I recommend just le letting her die because you get more runes that way because all the dragons around her will die as well. And you get the five dragon hearts where you can, which you can spend those dragon hearts at the dragon cathedral to get a bunch of good dragon incantations. Um, now at this point, because I used my gold pickled foot before I killed her the first time. Um, so like while I still have the buff active, I might as well kill this guy because this guy actually does drop a bunch of runes. 
and it does give you the stone barb cracked tier. But I forgot to use my buffs. I had like the wrong buffs equipped and the fight lasted a bit too long. So I had to use another pickled foulfoot. I probably shouldn't have in hindsight. Uh, but it does give you the stone barb cracked tier, which is nice to have. I probably just recommend killing him later in the playthrough once you get your plus 10 somber based weapon. Uh, but just now at this point, we're just going to go pick up some more weapons. All the best weapons in the game is going to pick them up. Um, we're getting the Bloodhound Fang, which is like one of the best, if not the best, dexterity weapon to have. That's just like next to the Arga Hill Lake South Grace. Um, now we're going to go grab the Bolt of Grand Sax, which is at the Erd Tree Sanctuary Grace, I think it is. You just go head down, go down the elevator. I think I skipped the elevator. Um, but it's just going to be on the spear. But these are going to be like the top two best dexterity weapons to use that require somber stones, which obviously this playthrough is going to require you having a somber stone to go through the DLC. Unfortunately, this playthrough is not centered around using smithing stones. You're going to have to do some more playing in your own time and kill some bosses to get some smithing stones. Uh, but now at this point, we're going to go to the underground, it seems. Yeah. I definitely recommend killing like scarabs and picking up items along the way because like I'm just like ignor ignoring a whole bunch of them. The scarab that I just walked past, I'm pretty sure that one drops Thunderbolt, Ash of War. It's not too bad. It's like a nice projectile to have. Honestly, it's kind of shit. Nah, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's okay. Um, but yes, in the underground, we're going to go pick up a Somber Seven and the Lord of Blood Exaltation. So if you're going with a Blade build, this is necessary to come down. Honestly, come down here anyway, because at this point in the game, if you have Lendel unlocked, this is going to be the easiest Somber Seven to acquire because it's just a matter of just running there, which is honestly not that hard. We're basically like right there. You just drop down to this pipe. Once you're on this section, just drop down again. You're going to take a little bit of fall damage, but you'll still survive. And go drop down again. In this little pipe, there's going to be the Scarab Boy, which has the Somber 7. I kind of goofed here. You want to hit him with two charge attacks. For some reason, I just hit it with a light attack. And now I fucking aggroed the lobster. And I think I die here as well. Yeah, fucking pieces of shit. Anyway, um, that's the Moog Shackle as well. You can actually go kill Godric earlier on in the playthrough. Then you can go access Lendel, go pick up the Moog Shackle. And you could use the Moog Shackle against Moog. If you do have problems, because I actually will stagger him um, for the first phase at least. And you could potentially like one cycle him that way. Um, it just makes the fight a bit easier. You can go pick up that and the purifying crystal tier. But I recommend just trying to fight him normally without those exploits. Because if you don't know how to fight Moog and if you're going to struggle against Moog, you're going to have a bad time in the DLC. Like I'm just going to be real. The DLC is going to fuck you up. Um, anyway, we're going through this dungeon right now because we're going to go get the Lord of Blood Exaltation. I think I was still before three hours and I don't know. I don't know what the time said. It was like two hours and 50 minutes. Still pretty decent on time. Um, anyway. What am I doing? Yeah, just follow the path. <laughs> I guess like the way to think about it is a pretty complicated dungeon. But like when you see the first flame pillar, just skip it and they'll go take an early right. Um, when you go drop down, there's going to be two paths. You take the one that goes to, has the stairs. And once you reach the second pillar, you go up that second pillar. And that's basically it. Um, I actually died like twice to this guy because he's a fucking dick. Um, but you'll be fine. Just spam attacks. <laughs> These dogs are so annoying. Um, you'll get there. There's like, there's no strategy. I mean, there actually is a way to kill him um, outside of the boss room. But like, honestly, it's it's not that bad. Like you have a decent leveled weapon. You can kill him pretty quickly. Even though I died twice. But <laughs> you'll be all right. I should have just showed like the exploited method. Um, but it's fine. It's not that big of a, it's not that much of a challenge. Anyway, go back to the Altus Plateau because now we're going to go head to the Volcano Man. Not just yet. We're actually going to go get the Godfrey's Icon. Um, the Godfrey's Icon is definitely a must have if you're going to be using the Bolter Grand Sacks. Um, it does require a Stone Sword Key, so make sure you have enough Stone Sword Keys too. There's going to be a lot of Stone Sword Keys required for this playthrough, but we're going to get enough. I think we end up with more than enough, honestly, for the whole playthrough. Um, but... Yes, the Godfrey's Icon is going to be a must-have for the DLC because I can guarantee there's going to be a bunch of weapons that ca that can be fully charged with certain weapon skills and a bunch of spells as well. So, like, even if you're not going to use a weapon or a spell that's going to be in the, um that you're going to take through in the DLC, I can't even speak right now. Um, you get the idea. <laughs> Just pick it up. Um, go speak to her so you can go to the Volcano Manor. Because you already had her quest line, you have the necklace and stuff like that. Um, go speak to Tanith, she'll give you the key. Then you just go run through the section. I should have had the lantern here as well, but I don't have it. It's just running to the right. Just hug the right. I think I'd like cut this little section out a little bit. Yeah, because I tried to fight the Bloodhound Knight, but he kept fucking moving. I didn't need to kill him, but I just felt like, I just felt like killing him and he just kept dodging. So that kind of annoyed me. <laughs> so I just gave up. 
Um, but yeah, now at this point, you can just go run to the left and just, just skip the entire section by jumping to the lava. But we're going to go this way so we can pick up the Erd Tree Seal. This is going to be the best seal to have at at least 69 nice faith and upwards. Um, before then, the God Slayer Seal is the best one. But this one requires somber stones, which is easier to build around. And we're going to get another weapon. We're going to get at least the first seven somber stones. So unfortunately, if you did want to use spells, you're not going to really have two plus ten weapons. You'll probably end up finding a somber eight and a nine in the DLC. So it's not going to be that big of a deal. I don't doubt there's going to be plenty of somber stones in the DLC. Plenty of eights and nines. Hopefully there is. Um, anyway, just continue along this path. Just go drop down. It's a pretty narrow path. But going up this side is going to net you the somber six. And then afterwards, it's going to get you a Sumber 5. So you have plenty of Sumber 5s and Sumber 6s. Um, and you're going to get a Sumber 7 after the boss as well, which is why we're here, honestly. Pick up the Sumber 7 and to pick up the Blasphemous Blade. I went to go craft some pots, so definitely do that before you enter the boss room. Because we're going to be finding the Godskin Noble. So sleep pots are going to be very handy here. You don't really need to do it, but it's just, ne it's just nice to have. Um, I am going to be doing bad damage here because, as you see, I try to use my Wondrous Flask. But I already used it at the Bloodhound Knight, so I don't have any buffs here for this boss fight. I don't have, like, buffs, but, like, not all my buffs. So, like, he doesn't die as fast as he normally would. But, yeah, basically, wait for an opening. Hit him with a Sleep Pot. Um, you should have, like, at least five pots here. Honestly, I recommend going to pick up some more. There's, like, some more NPCs, of which I talked about earlier in the playthrough, that you can pick up some more um, Sleep Pots. And there's the ones next to Godric as well that I didn't pick up. So you can get about eight or nine pots at this point. I have five. I kind of goofed there. Um, basically, what you should be doing is that you put him to sleep and you hit him with three charged heavy attacks. Probably hit him with two charged heavy attacks. And then you let your stamina come back a little bit, hit him with a third one. And then as he gets staggered, you can hit him with another one and then get the repost. If you just want like a very simple method, just hit him three times. It should work either way. But just go three charged heavy attacks and get the repost. One, two, th and then three, get a repost. You can do that method, that one works too, but like, I don't know, the three, it still worked perfectly fine. See, at this point he should have died there because I didn't have my buffs. I missed out on like plus 10 strength and the spiked cracked seed that would have been doing way more damage. Um, he should have died way earlier than that, but if you just do like the three charged heavy attack method, get the repost, throw a pot, put him to sleep again, that whole method should work perfectly fine. Um, but yeah, now at this point we're just going to go run through the rest of the Volcano Manor to pick up this Sombra 7. And we're going to go access the Rykard boss fight, which is going to net us the Serpent Hunter, which that's probably one of the best strength weapons in the game to have. Um, you can go through the DLC with that if you wanted to. Um, we're going to go kill Rykard to get the Blasphemous Blade there. So if you wanted to go through the game with the best weapon, we might as well kill him. Uh, it is like a narrow pass. Definitely hit up an Elevator. Because that is, we're going to come back here again because you have to go get the Sombra 7 and you have to go run back again to get the Blasphemous Blade. So definitely hit up that elevator to, to serve as a shortcut. Um, hit up the left side because if you go to the right side, you will aggro an enemy. Pro strats. I think you need two Stone Sword Keys here. So make sure you have at least two Stone Sword Keys before you enter this section. If you don't have the Stone Sword Keys, just go hit up the Rykard boss room and then come back with two. But like the... With all the, the bell bearings that you have, I'm pretty sure you could probably buy a whole bunch of Stone Sword Keys at the round table hold. Uh, pick up Royal Nut Resolve because it's like one of the best Ashes in the game. You're probably not going to be using it. Crag Blade, I think, is just going to be the better alternative in most cases, but it's still really good though. And that's going to be your Sumber 7. So that's your second Sumber 7. So at this point, you can get... You can go ahead and just actually make one of your Sumber weapons that you want to have as plus 10. If you want to go get like a Mogwin Sacred Spear at plus 10, you can go do that. Um, Bolter, Grand Sacks, Death Poker, you can make any of those weapons Sombra 10 at this point. But obviously if you wanted the Blasphemous Blade, you gotta go do this. But I just wanted to like run through the Volcano Manor again. Um, hit up the Teleporter this time. Now at this point I'm like goofing around a whole bunch. My brain is like not working. It's not even working right now. But um, you want to have your weapon in your right hand. <laughs> not your left. And you want to have a shield equipped. Um, that helps. Um, because you want to shield poke, shield poking does this really well. Um, you can go use uh, the lance in your offhand and go use like crouching attacks, power stance. But if you don't have the requirements of the lance, then it doesn't really work out. So I recommend just going with a shield instead. And when he does that stupid AOE attack like you saw at the beginning of the fight. How did I get hit by that? Am I bad at this game? Um, anyway, by the beginning of the fight, as you saw that AOE attack, it's much better to have a shield. I recommend going with the stamina or the total shield that you grabbed at the beginning of the game. It's not going to be like the best damage negation, but you know, stamina regeneration is pretty important. 
it's not much stamina regeneration. I think it's like six or seven percent, but it helps. And then yeah, basically just like shield poke the entire time. I didn't like slow down the gameplay because I'm playing pretty poorly. <laughs> like you just spam and just win, honestly. The boss fight is not that bad. You should have a decent amount of health to where you can tank a few attacks. Um, now the second phase is why it gets a bit interesting. Like as long as you just keep doing the same shield poking strats, um, it can, it's, it's pretty much the exact same fight. It's not that bad. You'll probably end up tanking attacks as well because you're blocking at the same time. So you can actually block a bunch of attacks. For whatever reason, if you're having problems with this fight, you can go buy some somber stones off Ichi. Um, anyway, this part, when you see the whole sky go red or you see him like lift up his weapon, that's when you two hand your weapon and use the skill because you can infinitely stun lock him that way. But you don't use the entire skill combo. You use the first part of the skill, then you wait a second, then you use the skill again. What I like to do is use a skill, crouch attack, and then use a skill again. So just see, skill, crouch attack, wait a bit to get your stamina back, skill, crouch attack, rinse and repeat. So basically every single time you see that sky go red, that means it's basically a GG because you get like a guaranteed combo. Uh, but yeah, now we're gonna go back to the round table by all like the most broken weapons in the game. Star Scourge is one of the best for strength. Mogwins is the best for Arcane and Blasphemous is the best for Faith. I think I leveled up a bit more. I'm going to go with a Faith and Intelligence build because I'm going to go play around the Sword of Night and Flame, which I'm going to go grab right now. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go with a DLC with this one. I just like did this as an example just to like have a build to go with. Um, I'm probably going to delete this character after the, this video, honestly. Just doing this for a video. Um, but yeah, there's a Sword of Night and Flame. Now I'm just going to level it up to plus 10. And now I'm just going to just be using this for like the remainder of the playthrough. And I'm just going to level up a Golden Order seal as well, just to show you guys that I do have another weapon at plus 7. And you can go by the Carrion Filigid Crest at this point also, which I also am going to be using because this um, Sword of Night and Flame is pretty expensive in terms of FP. Um, now we're going to go to the Academy Crystal Cave if you want to go get Terra Magico. Um, which is going to be very nice for this type of build and all intelligence builds, really, because well, anything at time, anytime you're doing magic damage, because it's 35% more magic damage, which is like one of the best buffs in the entire game. For anything, really. Um, I think I skipped the gameplay because, yeah, if you have the Iron Balls, Crystallians just get destroyed. So <laughs> you just do that, go up to Elevator, all the way to the top is going to be Terra Magico. And now we're going to go back to the Celia Tunnel. Because now we're actually going to go start doing Millicent's quest line to go get, um, obviously, the Millicent Prosthesis and the Flox Canvas Talisman. So it's good for dexterity builds and it's good for your faith type builds where you're using spells because the Flox Canvas Talisman is 8% more damage to your incantations. But yeah, go to the Celia Tunnel, go head south. I think I'm going to light up this Grace, which I don't need to do, but I forgot to equip Terra Magica. So that's the reason why I hit up that Grace. But you basically want to hit up the back side of this boss arena because the boss won't actually aggro this way. You can go like right up to the boss and just hit him with anything. I'm just going to go spam all my buffs. <laughs> I don't need to do all this. This is completely unnecessary. This is way too many buffs for this boss fight. But it is funny to see a boss just die in two hits. So yeah, I did it for the memes. It was funny. Um, but yeah, now I've got to go back to Millicent or the Church of Plague. And we're going to visit Gowry. And we're going to go give him the item of which we just got off Commander O'Neill. And he's going to turn it into something else of which we can go heal Millicent with that item. I have no idea about this fucking story of this game, but, but basically it's also dialogue. He'll give you that item. Then you quit out and reload because you've already killed Commander O'Neill. He'll give you the item. You go back to Millicent, go give her the item. Then you go rest at the Grace and talk to her again. Rest at the Grace. Very stupid quest line. Obnoxious quest line. That's nah, not that bad, honestly. <laughs> not that bad. I just wish there was a Grace next to Gowry. It would have made this process twice as fast. Uh, but yeah, you talk to her again. She gives you the Prosthesis Heirloom, which is plus 5 to Dexterity, but we're going to get a Talisman offer later on in the Millicent Prosthesis that gives us plus 5 to Dexterity and gives us boosted damage with successive attacks, which is actually really good. Uh, but yeah, you go back to Gowry Shack, and then Millicent's going to be there, exhaust her dialogue, then we go back to the Erdtree Gazing Hill in the Altus Plateau, and now we're going to go head all the way to the Shaded Castle to go get an item to give to Millicent. Um, definitely kill that Scarab because it's going to net us Blood Blade, which Blood Blade is probably one of the best Ashes of War in the entire game. It's really good, especially paired alongside the Naga Kiba or the Scavenger's Curve Sword. It's like a better version of Verduvia that way. Um, but yeah, go keep it heading all the way north. Is it north? Yeah, north. To the Shaded Castle. And we're going to go pick up the Valkyrie Prosthesis. Just keep following the path. It's not that complicated. And the Valkyrie Prosthesis, we give that back to Millicent. And she will be able to... Um, 
Yeah, we give her an arm, basically. <laughs> we give her an arm, and then we have to kill her to take the arm back to turn it into a talisman. Because for whatever fucking reason, we can't just use the arm as a talisman. We have to go give it to her. We have to break her heart and then kill her to have some stupid ending of a quest line just so we can get the good talisman. That makes no sense. But you know, it's just, it's a from soft game. People are gonna die. But yeah, pick up the item, go back to the Ur tree gazing hill. She should be chilling there at the left of the grace. Um, you give her the arm, then she'll teleport to the windmill village, which we're gonna go there right now. So go back to the forest spanning bridge. I forgot what the grace is called, but go back to that grace. Um, and then go to the portal, go run to the right, which is the fastest way to get to the windmill village. You can get there via the, um, the grace that's near the draconic tree sentinel and run down. Either way works perfectly fine. But yeah, that way on the map, yeah, it's not that hard to get to. Once again, if this gameplay is too fast for you, I have an uncut version. I linked it down in the description. And in the comments too. Um, I try to run to the left because you actually can run around this boss and go hit it from the back. Pause. But you can hit it from the back and it won't actually aggro. Um, but I realized I had sleep pots and I was like, I can just put the fucking thing to sleep. <laughs> I forgot we're fighting a god skin. So yeah, you could use sleep pots. That works. And I was going to do the same thing again. <laughs> just two shot the boss because it's funny. Honestly, anything works. He's not that hard, but he actually does give you the scouring black flame spell, which is actually a really good damage over time spell. Um, and you get black flame, and you actually get um the godskin pillar, which is probably the best twin blade in the game, which actually gives give you the um black flame tornado ash of war, which that one's actually really good to have, especially going to the DLC because a lot of the bosses in the DLC are going to be very resist and have a lot of damage negation. So using black flame damage over time is going to be really nice to have. So. Yeah, definitely do that. And oh uh, yeah, um, by the way, I killed the Millicent to get the Millicent Prosthesis. And then you go back to Gary Shack and you can kill Gary to get the Flox Canvas Talisman. Because he'll be heartbroken and then you kill him because that's the only way to get the Talisman. To make sure the enemies, or to make sure the NPCs have their hearts broken first for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, go back to the Windmill Village because there's going to be some Golden Seeds that we can go grab. You saw me go all the way down south to pick up the Golden Seed there. If you keep going south from where I grabbed that Golden Seed... Um, at the forest location, there actually is going to be a worm, a worm face boss, and that one actually does give you the health, I think it's the health regen tier, or the health boosting tier. Either way, just keep following the gameplay because there was another golden seed that I just picked up, and it's going to stick to like the right side kind of thing. We're going to go head all the way down to the black knife assassin in front of that statue, which is that dungeon thingy. Um, I cut the gameplay because I was like goofing around, I kept missing my attacks. Um, so yeah. Just kill the boss though, because that actually does give you the black knife. But we're going down here to go grab a sacred tier. Um, but the black knife is a destined death damaging weapon, which destined death is like another percentile damage over time effect, which that's like an even better version than black flame. Um, so if you're going to go with a faith build, that's like a must have for the DLC. That would probably make a quick work of a lot of bosses. If you feel like your damage is bad at all in the DLC, just use damage over time or percentile damage over time. Um, anyway, we're going to go here to pick up a lava tier. Um, we could have done this at the beginning of the playthrough, but like that involves killing a rune bear, and rune bears are broken, so we're gonna do that later on. <laughs> so yeah, but we've got a lava tier, because obviously we want to have the ability to respec if you end up finding like a really cool weapon in the DLC, and you want to change up your build. Um, also, definitely recommend. I didn't actually include it into the gameplay, but you want to go to Nokron, um, because Nokron actually has a whole bunch more lava tiers, and also does get the black wet blade to unlock bleed types of infusions and occult infusions. I completely forgot to do it in the gameplay. It's like the one black and um, wet blade that I didn't pick up. Uh, but we're going to go back to Morgwen's Palace to go all the way back to the beginning grace so we can actually unlock the best rune farming method in the game. Which, yeah, that involves killing this bird. All you're going to do is hit it one time. And then we'll end up falling off the ledge. So you have like a longbow that we picked up off the merchant in the round table. Go to Kale at the Church of Ella to pick up a bunch of arrows. And just hit this bird. I'm like struggling to hit it. I definitely recommend like aiming and not hitting it through the branches. <laughs> um, yeah. But every single time that you hit it, it's just going to fall off the ledge. So yeah, don't lock on and do it. Just like, use the weapon skill though. Because the weapon skill is mighty shot. It just travels much faster. But yeah, don't, don't lock on. Just free aim it. And every single time that you kill it, it's going to be 17,000 runes. You can go, if you use the gold pickled foul foot as well. So I recommend saving your pickled foul feed for that boss. Off of that farm. <laughs> um, pick and just consume any of your like extra runes that you have. Like the Lord's runes and Numen runes. And as you see, I was like at level 100. So we got to level 100 at like about three hours into the game, which is very good. And honestly, you can spend like an extra hour just doing that one farm to get to like level 125. I honestly recommend just playing the game in general to just get further ahead. 
to get like some more smithing stones and stuff. And then you can just get more levels that way. Um, but now at this point, we're going to go to Rayo Lucario. Um, keep following that path to go get the Graven School Talisman. That Talisman is like 4% damage to your sorceries. It's not that good, but just pick it up anyway. It actually was a Comet spell just before that section. Um, you can pick up that as well, but we have Knight's Comet, which Knight's Comet is just better. Um, anyway, um, I went back to the Grace to pick up my Fire Tier and my Faith Tier because we're going to go up against Magic Resist bosses. And the Fire-based version is just fucks him up, as you saw. He dies in one hit. Uh, we have a plus 10 weapon and like all the buffs in the world, so... <laughs> All these early game bosses are going to be done. But you're past the boss, you're going to get pick up the Glenstone Wet Blade, which is going to unlock magic and cold infusions. There's another golden seed there. And now we're just going to go run to Renala and fuck her up as well. Because we have a plus 10 weapon. But yeah, that's how you use a Sword of Night and Flame. If you're going up against enemies that are resist to magic, um, you go use the fire version. And then against everything else, you can use the magic based version. Because the magic based version is typically just better. Um, but yeah, I'm skipping like the Renala gameplay because, you know, <laughs> everyone knows how to fight Renala. You just hit the children. Then you hit the big lady. That's about it. Okay, now I'm actually going down after Renala to go down to that portal, which access gives access to Muriel. Um, I completely forgot that you actually can go give your scrolls to Salubis. And you could have given your some the scroll that has carry and slice it to him, but I gave it to Muriel instead. Um, also, I went back to Corrin at the round table hold to go give him the Black Flame prayer book and just buy a bunch of spells of him. So I bought the Black Flame spells, I bought Catch Flame, and I bought Carry and Slicer. I'm off Muriel, but yeah, I recommend giving it to Salubis. That saves a bit more time. But Muriel is based, so yeah, it's a cool turtle. Um, and I picked up a golden seed there because I needed like one more. And there was like a bunch that I missed as well. I think there was like one in Leonia that I missed also. That's like near the ruined precipice. I missed that golden seed, but I think that was like the last one that I needed to get to like 13 flasks. Um, now I'm just picking up, I'm just doing like some house cleaning at this point. So I went back, I picked up. Um, the Red Iron Wet Blade, which is next to, which unlocks Fire and Faith based um, infusions. That was next to um, the Redan boss room. And now I went back to the Dragon Cathedral to go buy some dragon spells. Um, I bought, what did I buy there? I bought um, Rotten Breath, Dragon Ice, and I think I bought Grail's Roar. I definitely recommend killing at least one other dragon to get another dragon heart. So you can get Dragon Maul. If you get those four dragon spells, then you're good. I also recommend picking up the memory stone from this boss and trying to find some other memory stones. Um, the, the red wolf of Radagon that we just killed dropped a memory stone, but you probably want to have at least like six or seven memory slots. So you probably do a fine for a bit more. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, at this point, we're kind of just done. Like, this is basically it. At this point, once again, I recommend going down to Nokron um, to go get the Black Wet Blade and go kill the Mimic tier to get some more Larval tiers. I also recommend just doing the Rune Finding Method at Mogwin's Palace. Um, that could just give you a bunch more runes if you want to get to level 125, which I recommend for the DLC. And also, I recommend just playing the game. Just go kill Morgoth, go head to the Fire Giant to speedrun there, go pick up any um, bell bearings along the way, go kill the Godskin duo, you get some more bell bearings off them, and you can basically have access to all the Smithing Stones and all the Somber Stones, and you could use those souls or the, use those runes that you got off the bosses to purchase those Smithing Stones. So you can just actually have like a bunch of stones to upgrade the weapons that you have in the DLC. So if you actually wanted to use any of the cool stuff in the DLC, I probably recommend doing that. But if you just wanted to have a build ready to play for the DLC, this is going to be it. Like if you just wanted to have like spend a limited amount of time possible, just getting like a character ready, have all the best weapons, and you just wanted to play through the game again or play through the DLC again, this is going to be the best thing for you. But if you actually wanted to use weapons in the DLC, you got to play the game a bit more. That's about it. But yeah, honestly, you have a plus 10 weapon now. You have all the best, most broken buffs broken talismans, you have everything that you really need to just break the entire game. So like, if you go fight the fire giant, God's Skin Duo, Malekith, even the final bosses, you're going to make very quick work with them. So it shouldn't be that long of a playthrough. If you were to do that, you can speed run to those areas pretty quickly. For me, this whole playthrough took about three to four hours. I think being that I'm more experienced in the game, obviously that's not going to be like that for everybody. Like on average, it might take about five to six hours, but like we have about five or six weeks until the DLC actually gets released. So if you spend like about an hour every single week, just working towards this character, then you'll be DLC ready in time and it'll be perfectly fine. Anyway, that is that, that is now completed. That is the video, I'm so done. I've been yapping for so long, I am just done, I'm done. See you guys.